Good morning. All right. So we are in the last week of the last four days of this class. So uh, uh, please, uh, if you have not turned on your camera, either turn it on or text me a photo of yourself. Um, I will type in my phone number. Let's see, where's the chat? There we go. In case you have forgotten my phone number. There is my phone number. If you are not putting your camera on or you have, can't get your camera on or whatever else, text me that photo and that would be amazing. So we can get a grade for your being in uniform. All right, so let's see here. Get what's growing on. Hold on a second. Man, I had a hard time waking up this morning. I don't know what it was. I, I was sleeping good, I guess. Let's see what's growing on. I'm not sure I'm seeing it. There we go. What is growing on? So we have spring break. There is no class uh, beginning this coming up Friday. So my camera is. Um, let's see. So starting this coming up Friday, you will not have class. Do not. Uh, come into the class, you know, uh, if there will not be anybody here. Uh, so uh, next Friday, uh, or this coming up Friday, the 26th, starts your spring break. Uh, classes will resume starting April the 5th. Now, um, I know that I'm supposed to contact my next class uh, and uh, hopefully, the other, whoever your chef instructor is going to be, they're going to be contacting you um, as well. Um, because like my, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm yawning a lot today. Um, but um, my, uh, my class is going to be four days a week on ground. So uh, Mondays will be lecture, but the rest of the time, will be uh, cooking at the school. So I, I've got to call my class about that. Uh, your instructor should be calling you or emailing you, one of the two, um, for next block, uh, to kind of get you ready for next block. Uh, let's see, remember, check your email, especially, I would say during spring break, I would check it at least halfway through spring break halfway through the week just to make sure that there's no communication or that there might be some communication um, to you for your next class or whatever else. Um, Zendesk, uh, you know, if you have any problems, you know, uh, call them or email them or, or go to this website, but calling was probably the best. Um, tutoring is now available. Um, have y'all seen where that is located on the portal, the tutoring uh, section? I will show you where that is uh, in just a second, but it is free for, for y'all uh, at any point. Um, the only thing is, is you just got to make sure the time zone is correct uh, when you're setting up the time, just because of, um, you know, th this does for online classes for, you know, Boulder, Colorado and all of that. So, you know, you just need to make sure you put the time zone in correct, uh, but it is free for you. Man, I apologize for all my yawning. Um, let's see. So uh, James Beard Foundation Scholarship. Guys, um, great, uh, great way to get free money. I'm gonna uh, copy this 
link and put it in our chat. And uh, it's free money, man. It is free money. Anytime I, I you know, anytime you can get free money, uh, why not? Right. Uh, and they're going to give it away. They're giving it away. So uh, why not you? Um, you know, the, I, I just kind of one of those things where I would suggest, you know, you fill it out. Plus, it looks great on a resume, uh, great on a resume, great on, uh, you know, when, when, when you, you that you were a found uh, James Beard Foundation uh, scholarship winner. I mean, that looks really good on a resume um as well uh top campus right now this is uh another service that we just started it is um and then i'm going to copy and paste this uh link into the chat uh this Um, hold on, so where I can make sure. There we go. Okay, uh, so um, this is a great service. Um, it is for um, only students uh, for you to kind of deal with, but it, it's basically uh, a service that can help you with mental health, uh, you, you name it. Um, it's, it's a great, great little service that, that we have. Uh, it can, uh, it, it's just, it's a really good service, but uh, it's, if you need to chat uh, with anybody, I can help you out, you know, also legal, uh, legal advice, you, you name it. Uh, but it, it is a great, uh, great thing. I would suggest, you know, you, you can either get on to the app store. Uh, it's called uh, Talk Campus. Um, it, it's on either Google Play or uh, Apple devices, um, you know, and I think you can get on to their website. Uh, it is a free service. It is free to you. It is completely uh, anonymous. The school has no uh, part of it. You can, you can talk uh, to anybody. They are, uh, I, I think, uh, certified uh, counselors to you, you name it. It is a good service. Um, I, from, what I, from what I've seen, I, I, we, we, can't, we don't have any access to it. It's only for students but it is called Top Campus. Uh, I would, um, you know, suggest all y'all, you know, getting it, downloading it, checking it out. I, I think it'd be a great service for anybody. Um, let's see, holiday schedule right here. Um, so we've got March 26th, no school, uh, 29th through the second spring break. And then the next, uh, Holiday or uh, holiday for you is in service on May the uh, 14th after spring break. So uh, here it is. Um, if you have any address changes, I will uh, see if I can copy that link and put that in the chat. There is that. So if you have address or phone number changes, uh, please uh, uh, go to this form and uh, change your address or what whatnot, uh, phone number, you name it, any of those things. Um, you know, here are mortgage assistance, COVID testings, uh, flu vaccines. Um, you know, even though that we still have this mental health uh, issue our uh, phone number. Uh, 
my suggestion would be go to the uh, instead of doing this. Uh, I mean, you can always do this mental health thing right here, but I would say um, I, I would suggest going to that talk campus. Probably a better uh, a, a better thing uh, for y'all uh, if you need any mental health or any assistance in general. They, they'll help you out with uh, just about anything. It is. Uh, kind of for everywhere, but they have local services information as well. Um, let's see, if you have any questions on financial aid or money, money things that come, uh, that has to deal with uh, the school, Mary Reardon, this person right, right there, she will uh, take care of you. Uh, she'll help you out. Um, if you have any problems, something like that, you know, don't ever hesitate to call her. Um, or I'm sorry, email her. Um, let's see, uh, again, practice safe distancing, wash your hands, cover your mouth, all of that good stuff. Um, disinfectant, half a cup of Clorox to a gallon of water, I think that's excessive. Maybe cut that down just a skosh. Uh, and uh, Derek, she is career services. She will help you out. Uh, you know, oops, what did that do? Sorry. There we go. Um, Anne will help you out. Uh, she is great at uh, helping with, uh, you name it, finding a job, getting. Uh, getting you an extern, whatever else. I'm gonna post her uh, email in the chat just in case you might need it. Um, she's a, she, you know, I would say if you're looking for a job, you need anything, you know, she's the, she's the lady in charge. She can help you out. And uh, a great website is right here, Poached. I'm gonna copy and paste that to the web or to the chat line. Um, that's a great uh, website to help you find a job. Um, plus I absolutely love just looking at it because seeing what kind of cool jobs are out there. Uh, because again, there's gonna be, there, there's that perfect job somewhere for you. Uh, you just gotta search for it. So I, I never stop looking for a job. I always, you know, there's that, there's going to be that one cool job that you're going to go, wow, this is amazing, All right? So you can always find it uh, on Poach. Uh, you have uh, Torchies, Torchy Tacos. They're looking for people. Um, doesn't show how much, but um, Torchies. Uh, if you want a job there, the Omni Hotel and Resort in downtown Austin. There we go. Um, San Jacinta and Ape, uh, they're hiring. And then uh, the Fairmont, the Fairmont is downtown also. They're looking for, for people as well. So um, let's see. All right, Chef uh, Women's History Month. Uh, nice, I'll let y'all kind of sit and read, read that for a couple of minutes and, uh, and then I'll move on. Best chef in 19 or in uh, 2017. That's awesome. All right. Uh, she was also featured in documentary A Chef's Table. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, if anybody's ever re uh, watched The Chef's Table, I, I think that's a, a great show um, on Netflix. Uh, if you've never watched it, I would recommend it. Michelin Award. Wow. That's very cool. Nice. 
All right, uh, quote of the week. Nice, that's a great quote. Just for fun. <laughs> Jolly Rancher. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. All right, uh, what is the, is the most used ingredient in traditional Mexican food. We have chili peppers, cilantro, lime, onion, or tomato. Tomato. What do you think? Someone says onion. Someone says chili peppers. Another one says chili peppers. Someone says onion. Onion. All right, let's see, let's see. Uh, chili peppers, yay, who won? Let's see, uh, all right, nice, great job. All right, all right, chili peppers. All right, all right. Close this out. So uh, let me stop sharing for a second. All right, uh, so I was looking at uh, some of y'all's uh, check your knowledges. Just make sure you get those check your knowledges done. There's a few people that still has not gotten the check your knowledge done. Uh, make sure you get that taken care of. Uh, very important. Hold on. All right. Last week we have uh, we're going to be in uh, Japan. Uh, we're going to be doing um, tempura vegetables with a soy dipping sauce. And if any, anybody's ever had tempura, tempura is a very thin batter. Um, it should be very crispy and kind of, and, and it should be like a kind of pale white-ish or kind of creamy, uh, creamy kind of color or pale white. Um, you know, tempura is a, a very light uh, breading or a light uh, batter. It is a batter. I said breading, but I meant to say batter because uh, it, it's a, I, if you've ever made pancake batter before, it's like a really thin pancake batter or a, uh, um, yeah, I, I would say more of a thin pancake batter. Um, let me show you what tempura vegetables look like. All right, so here is kind of a tempura vegetables, very light, kind of a, a light breading. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can kind of see it's very pale. It, it's kind of a crispy, very, very crispy uh, color um, or cr crispy uh, texture and just kind of a paler whitish. Uh, oh, you, you tried uh, tempura shrimp yesterday. That's awesome. That, that's kind of a, it should have a kind of a crispy, very white uh, appearance, um, but it, very good. It usually has cornstarch in it, uh, some flour, uh, sometimes uh, like club soda, depending on uh, d d depending on the recipe. But uh, it's just a very um, basic breading, uh, especially in Asian cookery. 
especially in Japan. Um, you know, Japan is, is a big, uh, they, it's a very light breading. It's, it's not like, a, or I keep saying breading and I apologize. It's a light batter. Um, it, it, it's not a heavy batter. It, it's a very thin, um, crispy batter that, that's just, that doesn't have really that much flavor, honestly. Um, it's a kind of a, a, a blander flavor, uh, but it, it, it helps, um, it doesn't detract from the flavor of the product itself. So it, it's a very kind of a mild flavor, um, but uh, you can tempura just about anything. I mean, I, I've done, I mean, even a tempura kind of a, I mean, I, um, what do you call it? I like, uh, you name it. I mean, I, I've tempered, uh, like desserts, uh, you, you, you know, you could just to do like a cheesecake, you, you know, anything you can tempura, uh, from even squid, octopus or octopus or, um, uh, you know, any, any of that sort of stuff. Onions, uh, bell peppers. Uh, you know, the only thing with bell peppers, you've got to be very careful because the skin, uh, the tempura doesn't uh, stick to the skin very well. And sometimes I uh, will fire roast or roast the pepper to get the, uh, to make sure that the skin uh, or it goes really well. Now, do you see right here, this is a little dark. I would say that that tempura is just a, a skosh dark, but again, really depending on what region of Japan you're in. Oops, uh, my apologies. I lost my tempura page. All right, uh, but uh, that's what tempura uh, looks like. And let's see here. Uh, let me make this a little skosh larger for y'all. Oh, am I not sharing? Am I sharing? Yes, I am sharing. All right. Um, so you've got rice flour, you have cornstarch, you have baking soda, salt, water. The water needs to be cold. Um, because the reason why it needs to be cold is because the cornstarch. Because if you've ever put hot water in cornstarch, it kind of starts to kind of get clumpy and not so nice. Uh, so you need to make sure that you uh, you uh, use cold water. Um, let's see, you've got rice flour. Um, rice flour is a very white flour. Um, very, very... Uh, has anybody ever used rice flour before? It's very kind of real, real pale white. Um, it, it's a it's a great uh, great thing for tempura because it, it'll make sure that the batter is uh, more on the whiter side. Uh, you got cornstarch, baking soda. The baking soda is there is for uh, the leavening or the the puff a little bit. Um, so that that is the uh, the leavening agent, the thing that makes it puff up. Uh, you have salt, you have water, and then you have mushrooms, broccoli, uh, sweet potato, Asian eggplant. It could be just about anything. Whatever you want to tempura, you, you can tempura, all right? Carrots, uh, you, I would say celery, not the best because it's got a lot of water in it. Um, but uh, you can tempura shrimp, um, you can tempura it in anything. Um, my suggestion, um, the way I tell if my tempura batter is, is the proper consistency, I dip my, bro I, I usually try to get a piece of broccoli or a mushroom uh, and I dip it in and I pull it out and I don't, if the batter uh, oozes inside the broccoli, 
or just kind of falls off the, um, the mushroom, then it needs to be just a little bit thicker. Um, the thing I say is you, you put in, the way you're gonna combine it, you're gonna put your flour, uh, your cornstarch, your baking soda, mix all in the salt, mix it all up. You know, you wanna mix it all up and then you're gonna add your uh, cold water. Okay, now uh, the, the most important thing is you're not gonna over mix this or overwork it because what happens is, is even though, um, you know, you're using, you're, you're using rice flour, but uh, it still creates this kind of, kind of tacky and thicker stuff. So if you overwork it, it, it's, it needs to sit and rest for a little bit. So once you mix it all up, let it sit and rest for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so before you actually fry up anything because you, you don't want to, you don't want to create any gluten. I know that rice flour uh, and cornstarch do not create gluten, but uh, some people will put in a little flour or whatever else. And if you let it sit, or if you kind of create a bunch of gluten and then you try to bread it or uh, batter it and fry it, it tends to get a little tough and chewy. So you want to make this batter and just let it sit and just chill out for about five to 10 minutes before you actually batter up anything. Um, I usually, um, you know, you've got to think about this, the mushroom, the broccoli, the potatoes, or any of whatever you're doing is usually not really seasoned, right? Because it's, it's a dry, your, your shrimp is dry or whatever else. It's all dry and you dip it in the batter. Well, uh, you need to make sure that you see, season your batter well enough. Make sure you salt and uh, you know salt that batter really well because if not, it, it's going to taste bland, especially with an unseasoned mushroom, right? You know, a, un, you're not going to want a wet mushroom to to. You, you don't want really your mushrooms all wet and all of that, but. You're, if you throw salt and pepper on a dry mushroom, it's not going to stick, right? It's, it's not going to stick. Or a, a piece of broccoli, if you salt and pepper a piece of broccoli, it's not going to stick to it. Uh, so you need to make sure that your batter is well seasoned properly. So where it, it gives that saltiness that you're looking for. Plus, when you take it out of the fryer, you need to make sure you season it with salt. Uh, right after you take it out of the fryer, all right? Um, so the mushrooms, you can cut them in half, you can leave them whole. The broccoli, you know, florets. I would suggest um, the, the stem of the broccoli, make sure it's not too thick because you wanna make sure everything is cooked properly. Um, and if your broccoli is not completely covered with that batter, uh, your broccoli will start to kind of discolor or blacken or darken too, too much. So just w watch out on that. Um, that. That's pretty much it. Um, it's you're going to get a bowl. You're going to put all your dry ingredients in there and mix it all up and then uh, slowly mix in your, uh, your water. You just don't want to use a wire whip too much and like beat it up because you don't want a bunch of air bubbles in it because then that could cause um, issues when you fry it. Any questions on the, the tempura? No, chef. No, okay, good, good, good. All right, um, tempura is a, a really quick, easy uh, thing to do. Um, but, it, and you can see, uh, I, I've done um, artichokes, you, you, you name it. Uh, you know, you, you can do just about anything, but it, it looks really nice. Um, you just don't want a heavy batter. You want a light, very light batter. So let me get to the next, what is that? Soy sauce, dipping sauce, or...
Okay, the soy is, you are the, the dipping sauce is soy sauce, mirin, and I'm gonna uh, go grab a bottle of mirin. Hold on, let me, let me sh so everybody will see what it is. Put my mask, give me one second. Be right back. All right, so here is the bottle of murin right here. It's a uh, basically a uh, sweet cooking rice seasoning. Um, that it's kind of a sweet wine, if you will. Um, so, but it is uh, something that you would need for making this dipping sauce. It's there. It is. Mirin, right there. Sweet cooking rice seasoning. Um, that that's kind of what what we're looking for. Um, and then you've got rice wine vinegar. You have dashi. Oh, hold on, let me go get dashi. Because a lot of this stuff is some new ingredients. So let me grab. A dashi is bamito flakes. So bamito is a fish and it is basically fish shaving. Okay, it gives you that umami or, or the salty, uh, the, uh, fermented flavor. Um, and then you got scallions and then you have uh, sesame oil, okay? So it's just basically a little bit of everything uh, kind of mixed up. So you have soy sauce, mirin, rice wine, dashi, scallions, and sesame oil. The scallions are basically uh, just uh, the green part. Uh, you, you can use just the green part. And uh, my suggestion is instead of cutting it in a little straight, cut it on a bias or uh, angle your knife, to just give it a nicer shape. Uh, but basically mix all of that up. That's the dipping sauce. It's pretty easy, uh, but that is, uh, that is it. Now, um, the dashi, in, 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 let's see if there's any other forms of dashi. Let me pull up. Dashi for you, just so you can see. Um, that picture. All right, here. Um, So this is what dashi looks like right here. Uh, basically it looks like wood shavings, um, but it is dried fish, uh, very thin, thin dried fish. And when, when you put it in, it basically gives it kind of that salty kind of a, um, you know, in a, in a way a fishy flavor, but not too much. Uh, but that uh, if you've ever had miso soup, uh, dashi is in miso soup. Uh, but it, it's basically just dried, uh, dried, very thin shaved fish. Ooh. Excuse me, right. chef. 
What can I yes. use since I have that allergy to really seafood and all that? I, I just wouldn't I just wouldn't use it. I, I would just not uh, there's I, I wouldn't re replace it with anything. I would just uh, okay. just not use just the dashi. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I and mean, you could use like miso if you would like. Miso is kind of a fermented bean paste or, or fermented uh, soybean uh, paste. So you, you could use a little bit of maybe miso um, to give it that kind of fermented or that kind of a, a, um, a little bit of the taste, but uh, you know, it's okay if you don't use it. Uh, Thank it's you. Not gonna, it's not going to change the flavor. The shopping. Yeah. Could you say it one more time? I apologize. I, I, I said thank you. you. I said thank you, and I will be later, like around 31. Oh, okay. The, the, you know, the shopping list. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I'll make uh, sure I check on that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so that that's the... Um, that's kind of the soy uh, or the the basically the dipping sauce uh again it's all about balance it's all about trying to find that balance so um you know the mirin the soy the dashi the scallions the sesame oil i would say for the sesame oil please be very careful a little bit goes a long way um you know it, it can easily uh Go, be a little too strong. Uh, so j just be very careful. Just try to find that happy balance uh, in, in that flavoring uh, aspect of it. All right. And then um, that is it. Uh, oh, in steamed, uh, I'm sorry. And uh, so that's it for that dish. Um, let's see. Oops. Katsudon. Okay, so Katsudon. Uh, let me get you what Katsudon looks like first. Okay, it is. basically uh, rice with uh, basically a, a fried piece of pork, uh, usually uh, breaded, and it's usually breaded with uh, panko breadcrumbs, uh, Japanese style breadcrumbs. And, and actually, just to let you know, those Japanese breadcrumbs um, um, are really not there, it's kind of a batter uh, that they push out and it makes it kind of puff, kind of like a cheese puff. If you've ever seen a cheese puff being made, it's almost similar to that. Um, but uh, that this is um, basically what it, what a katsudon. Uh, you, you can have a piece of pork. Um, usually with rice at the bottom. The pork is um, uh, pounded out really thin, seasoned and breaded and fried. Um, so we have pork loin or cutlets. The pork loin or cutlets need to be, uh, you want to trim off any of the fat or silver skin or any of that sort of stuff. And you want to pound it out, um, pound it out even evenly thin. Um, if you've ever had like schnitzel, um, it's almost like schnitzel, uh, very thin, pounded out piece of pork. Uh, you have egg, panko, all-purpose flour, and yellow onion. Uh, and so the egg and the flour are for a breading station, right? So you have uh, Basically, in the panko is breading station, so it's a three-stage breading. Uh, you have uh, flour, egg, panko. 
uh, you pound out your piece of pork really thin. Um, and you're going to season your piece of pork with salt and pepper. You're going to uh, put it in your flour, take it out of the flour. You want to kind of spank it off and make sure that uh, there's no excess flour on there. It's a really thin coating. Then you're going to put it in the egg. The egg needs to be egg and water, um, egg and whatever, some sort of liquid to thin it down. Uh, it should not be kind of snotty like, it shouldn't be thick because when we uh, stick it in the egg, we want that egg to kind of uh, mix in with that flour that's on top. That's gonna create our glue. Uh, and then we're gonna put that into our panko and we're going to make sure that I basically put the pan, lay it down and then put panko on top, press it down really good and then shake it off and make sure it's nicely coated. Um, any questions about the breading procedure? Um, then you're going to get some sort of fat. I don't, you know, whatever fat that turns you on, excites you, you know, you name it. Uh, it could be canola oil. It could be, I, I would suggest no butter, um, you know, but if you want to use a little bit of butter, I would mix it with either canola oil uh, and butter mix or, you could use lard, you could use, uh, you know, you, you could use just the, any, any sort of fat that, that excites you. I mean, I, when I was cleaning out the fridge, yes, uh, our la on Friday, uh, before I left, uh, I was cleaning out the fridge and I saw some duck fat. So I might cook mine in duck fat tomorrow, um, just cause it, I, I, cause we have duck fat, uh, but uh, you can fry it. But we're going to uh, we're going to get a saute pan. You're going to get hot uh, some hot fat in, in a saute pan, and you're going to cook it. And it's not going to take long because it's pounded out ultra thin, and um, so it's going to take maybe five minutes at the most to cook. Um, but the most important thing is when you pound out that meat, you want to pound it out so where uh, you kind of, it's not going to shrink up on you. I, I mean, when I was younger, there was a thing called shrinky dinks where you would kind of, uh, uh, it was like something, basically it would shrink up a piece of plastic that would kind of shrink up into a small piece. Well, if you don't pound out that meat enough, it's going to shrink up and it's going to get thick and it's going to be very chewy. So uh, you need to make sure you kind of break those meat fibers down a little bit. And then the onions, the julienne onions that are sitting over here that I haven't talked about, uh, you're just gonna have some julienne onions and you're gonna just kind of have them kind of cooked. Uh, you can cook them however, you know, in a saute pan, uh, usually kind of just quick, uh, like a quick saute, you know, you, you, you want, you don't want it to be raw, but you don't want it to be caramelized like uh, French onion soup. So you want somewhere in the middle, right? So you just need to find that happy medium. So uh, you don't want it raw. You don't want it French onion soup. So, you know, it should be nice and tender, but not, uh, not falling apart. And then the, um, then the uh, sauce mixture, it's a, a two, one, one ratio. Uh, you have, soy, dashi, excuse me, dashi and mirin. Um, almost similar to this minus the uh, rice wine. Okay. Um, so any questions on, uh, I mean, the dipping sauce is, is basically the ratio is uh, uh, two parts soy, uh, one part dashi, one part mirin. Uh, that's where the two one one ratio comes from, or uh, the numbers, how they. Uh, so that would be soy should be two, uh, uh, dashi and mirin should be one. Uh, you mix all of all those together, and that's the dipping sauce. Any questions about the Katsudan. 
Um, and then I think the katsu don also has steamed rice. So you're going to need to uh, steam or cook some rice. So you've got your, I guess I didn't even, oh, there we go. Uh, short grain rice and water. Uh, you, anytime you uh, cook rice, you need to rinse your, uh, especially Asian style rice, you need to rinse that rice at least, uh, I would say two to three times until that water comes out clear uh, and not that milky color. Um, and then you're just going to uh, just a two to one ratio uh, and cook it until it's done. Fluff it up and that's it. You're going to serve, you're going to put the, get a bowl or a, I, it's usually a bowl. Get a bowl, put a, some rice in the middle, uh, put your, um, your piece of pork right there. I usually We'll slice it on hard bias, fan it out, have my onions kind of sit in there, and I have my dipping sauce onto the side. Maybe have some green onions uh, garnished uh, for that. Questions about the katsu don and the steamed rice? No? All right. Well, let's take a 10 minute break and we'll come back and uh, see you in, in about 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, Chef. Cool, cool.
All right, guys, it is 7.10. Let's get back to it. All right. So again, just going to reiterate this. If you do not have your camera uh, on, please text me a picture of yourself to make sure that you are in uniform. I am going to be emailing our in the chat is my phone number at 771-4979 to get credit for being in uniform. I've got to see uh, either a picture or you turn on your camera, whatever else. But ah, thank you, Miss Pope. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, please do that. Thank you, Miss Pope. I appreciate it. Isaac, thank you. I appreciate it. So today, uh, or I'm sorry, the next day is going to be in Thailand. Has anybody ever been to Thailand? I've always wanted to go to Thailand. Uh, that's, uh, that's on my bucket list to do Thailand uh, one of these days. Um, we've got red curry. Uh, we have steamed rice and pad thai. Uh, so those are the things we are going to be doing the following day. So red curry, um, if you see right here, um, let me get you a better, quicker, or there's a picture of red curry. Red curry usually is not like completely like red, red. It's more of a kind of a pinkish, um, you know, that you, you typically see. Uh, but you also have like a green curry as well. Um, you, you have different uh, styles of curry. Hold on a second. Uh, you have different styles of curry, but uh, red and green are usually. Uh, the, the two that you normally see. Um, so let's see, let's get to back to the curry. Um, hold on, let me get the recipe. And I'm gonna show you what y'all are gonna be having for your curry. Let me go get the red curry container real quick. So y'all can see that. Okay, now you can make your own red curry paste or you typically will buy um, red curry paste. Here is, uh, this is red curry paste right here. Um, and you will see, let me open this up, uh, but it comes in a little plastic bag, but it's basically a paste right here. Uh, you can will be using. So I think uh, what y'all are going to be getting is a little kind of uh, some of this in a portion cup, uh, the red curry paste. Um, you can buy this at any um, most Asian style grocery stores. And I think HEB uh, also sells that. Um, let's see. So let's see what we got here. Let me make this just a skosh larger for y'all. Okay. Um, we have chicken. Uh, we have uh, red curry paste, coconut milk, carrots, bamboo shoots, onions, broccoli, uh, Thai eggplant, usually Thai eggplant here. Let me show you. If you've never seen a Thai eggplant, they're long and skinnier. Um, there we go. It's not long and skinny, round and short. There you go. 
So that that this is kind of what a Thai eggplant looks like. Not, I, I was thinking Japanese uh, or Japanese eggplant, but Thai eggplant is uh, round. Uh, looks kind of like a, a tomatillo. Uh, if you know, if, I would say it kind of looks like a tomatillo in a way, but this is kind of what a Thai eggplant looks like. Um, hold on a second. So you've got Thai eggplant, red bells, uh, yellow squash, uh, basil, fish sauce, and cilantro. Okay, first of all, anytime you see fish sauce in a recipe, always, whatever the amount it says, cut that amount in half. I don't care what it says, but cut it in half just because you can always add more, you can never take it away. And man, if you put too much fish sauce in something, it's just un, unbearable. I mean, it's too strong. It's, it's not, it, you know, it, it's really strong. So you need to be very careful with that. Um, so uh, here is the uh, red curry. So you got chicken, let me show you. So you've got typically the chicken or, or whatever else is usually cubed up or diced or cut up in some way. Uh, now I, I have seen um, maybe red curry, like bigger chunks, but we're gonna be cutting up the, uh, cutting up the chicken. Uh, and it's more of a kind of a soup slash stew if you will. Uh, so it needs to be kind of a thick, but not too thick. Uh, so like I would say a combination of a soup and stew. So somewhere in that kind of consistency range. Um, so the recipe is, um, so what I would do, I would get my, um, So I would get my uh, chicken, I would cut up my chicken, and then I, I would uh, kind of work on my curry. My, uh, I would have my curry paste. I would put in a pot with some uh, coconut milk and kind of mix that up so where it's kind of more of a, you know, soupier stuff. So what I would do is I would get my pot, get my, get a little bit of heat onto my pot. Uh, you know, I, you could either use a sauce pot or a braising pot, something uh, maybe with just with taller sides. Um, then I would uh, put in my onions, kind of sweat my onions a little bit. Uh, then, uh, you know, I would sweat my onions, take out, you know, I would do all my vegetables. And then I would take out my vegetables. So kind of cook your vegetables in the saute pan or in your braising pan. You cook all your vegetables and then I take them out. Uh, the reason why I want to take it out is I don't want to overcook it and, uh, and all of that. So I take out my vegetables. Then I will uh, put in my uh, chicken. Uh, and, and then uh, after my chicken is cooked a little bit, I, I I usually take that out. Then I've got a, a pan that's got a bunch of flavor in it, right? I've got, uh, cause I just cooked a bunch of vegetables. I cooked my chicken in there. And now I, I kind of took out everything. Then I'm gonna put in the curry paste. And then uh, I put in the, uh, the coconut milk and adjust it with a little bit of water if need be, or chicken stock or some sort of liquid uh, and kind of make, start making that uh, curry uh, liquid. Then I put everything back in and kind of finish it that way. So I kind of cook everything ahead of time. Then I put make my basically curry mixture and that is the coconut milk uh, and um, let's see, coconut milk and what else? Um, sorry, lost my... Uh, water, coconut milk, and uh, the curry paste. 
I'd mix all that up together. Now make sure it is coconut milk, not coconut cream. If you use co uh, cream of coconut, it's too fatty and, and it will kind of separate and break. Uh, the other thing I would be very careful with is making sure that you don't have a lot of fat in your pan when, when, when you put your curry and your uh, coconut milk in there, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, hold on, let me get this picture. Uh, so you're gonna have this kind of soup stash or slash stew, right? You're gonna have the red curry, right? Uh, and you're gonna have a large amount of grease just oozing on the top. So you need to manage how much fat you use when you kind of cook your vegetables, right? And you cook, cook everything. So you don't want it too fatty because uh, at the end product is gonna have a lot of grease. Um, so first thing I would do is I would get a pot, get some small amount of fat in there, uh, cook my vegetables, take out my vegetables, cook my meat, take out my meat, then put in my red curry paste, put in my uh, liquids. You know, you can put in your fish sauce, you can put in kind of all of that liquid, you can put in your coconut milk, you can add a little touch of water if you need to, or chicken stock, whatever kind of liquid you want to. And then, uh, then you're going to combine everything together, kind of cook it for a, a few minutes, and then uh, you're going to just bowl it up and, and uh, or put it on a plate. I usually will uh, use a bowl uh, to plate it up. Uh, and then garnish is cilantro, just like kind of kind of like they have here, or if they, if you have any Thai basil. Uh, you could uh, shipping on some Thai basil, or if you have smaller Thai basil, uh, like they have right here uh, in this picture, um, you can put a little bit of small uh, Thai basil in there. But uh, if it is a larger leaves, I would shift knot it or cut it up into smaller pieces uh, to put it in your in your red curry. Um, but this is what you're gonna be using is the red curry paste. You're not gonna be creating your own red curry. You're gonna be using this red curry paste. Questions about this red curry? No, All right. No All sure. right, and we got steamed jasmine rice. So um, again, we're beating that dead horse, right? We, we have done, steamed rice for how many times? So many times now. So, uh, you know, just need some steamed rice and that steamed rice, excuse me, that steamed rice is going with the red curry. So you got the red curry and then you got the steamed rice. Basically it's like a, a like beef stew with rice kind of a deal. So uh, the, the, one, the one thing I would make sure of is I, I would want, I kind of want this sauce a little thick enough to, to kind of coat or to make sure that that meat looks coated, uh, but not like pasty, like we want it real thick, but we want it because the meat's going to look kind of dried out if we don't have that sauce kind of coating the uh, the chicken or whatever else. But uh, we're gonna have the rice down below. We'll have the uh, red curry uh, right on top of it. Um, oh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy on that. And then you got the pad thai. Let's, let me show you what pad thai looks like. Pad Thai is a noodle dish. You know what? I mean, over this whole block, you, 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 you know, we have done noodle dishes all across the United States and all across the world, basically from uh, Italy noodle dish to, you know, like Philippines, the, uh, um, you know, they had a noodle dish. We've got, uh, you know, 
France noodle dish, you know, everybody, each region has some sort of noodle dish. Uh, Pad Thai is a uh, noodle dish. Let me see. Uh, kind of looks something similar to this right here. Uh, you got noodles, you usually have limes or lemons, kind of like in the Philippines that we had some lemons for our noodle dish. Uh, we had uh, some vegetables in there, uh, all, all of that, but pad thai is basically a noodle dish. Uh, but usually have, pad thai usually has a vinegar base uh, or kind of an acidity uh, to it. So let me get to pad thai, or did I clean it up? Pull up pad thai recipe real quick. It's a little larger. Okay, so you got uh, pad thai noodles. Um, you have Chinese uh, chives or scallions. Uh, you can use green onions as well. Uh, bean sprouts. Uh, my suggestion is make sure you rinse those bean sprouts. Uh, I always like to rinse the bean sprouts. I do not want uh, unrinsed bean sprouts because they're just sitting there and, it, and it's in their bean sprouts are a little bit wet usually. So you want to rinse it off and kind of clean them off. You have eggs, tofu. You have, um, let's see, white wine vinegar. And we have kind of a tamarind paste, uh, kind of, and, and y'all had, had used that um, before, uh, I think, on um, one of the days. I can't remember what day it was last week, but I had a little bit of tamarind uh, paste that I kind of soaked in and kind of softened in some water. Uh, but uh, but that, that is kind of what you're going to be using as well. All right, uh, so tamarind paste, uh, you have uh, white vinegar, uh, sugar, white sugar or palm sugar. Um, so, you know, if you don't have palm sugar, you can use plain sugar. Uh, the Thai bird's eye chili, uh, let me show you. It's those red, it's a very red, let me show you. Because these are a bunch of just, so it's a, a kind of a red chili paste or a red, it, it's almost like a, um, red pepper flakes, but they're made from the uh, Thai chili. Um, and here are the bird's eye chili right here. It's a real red, small uh, chilies. And, uh, and also we used these yeah, last week also, or when we did, uh, what is it? The chicken, um, Kung Pao chicken, right? Uh, I think we, we did, we used some of these dried uh, bird's eye chili uh, for the Kung Pao chicken. Uh, so that, that is that. Get yeah, peanuts, lime, and fish sauce. Again, uh, fish sauce, be very careful with the amount of fish sauce. You can never take it away. It, it can ruin dishes. This can ruin a dish if you're not careful. Uh, and I, I keep making sure you understand that it, it, it can screw up a dish because uh, it, it can be very, very strong. I, so um, you're going to cook your noodles ahead of time. You're going to have your noodles cooked and uh, kind of oiled, lightly oiled. Uh, whoever it was, I can't remember who it was last week or whenever, uh, I think they over oiled their noodles, maybe a little bit too much, um, maybe put, or I think they, someone said they, they sure. put a little, yeah, put a little sesame, too much sesame oil, right? Was that, was that you? 
Yes, Chef. I have put yeah. a little bit of sesame oil, which made it uh, the noodles come out very oily and too much yeah. soy. Yeah. So just manage that. Uh, so when you when you cook your noodles, just don't put as much oil in there. Just be careful on that. Um, so you're going to have your noodles cooked off, and then um, everything out. It's kind of kind of like a stir fry in a way. You're just going to um, you know, get your noodles and then, uh, then I usually will, um, uh, or it's like, a yeah, I, I mean, I would like to say like a stir fry, but, um, but what I usually do is, is, uh, you've got your vinegar. I usually get my vinegar, my sugar, um, and, and mix that together. So where it's kind of a, a sweet but sour, uh, and and I and I don't know how to just um, describe it. You just don't want it too too ultra sweet. That that's the, the the main thing. You don't want it sweet, ultra sweet, but it does have a hint of sweetness in there. So you just need to make sure that you know you add a little bit of uh, sugar in there. Uh, and I usually just dissolve that sugar in that vinegar because if you do not, uh, if you just add the sugar to it, sometimes it will that the vinegar or I'm sorry, the if you just kind of sprinkle in the sugar and mix it all up, uh, you typically get that kind of granulated sugar feel in your mouth. So what I would do is I would mix the vinegar and sugar uh, together, and then um, Kind of have that sitting off to the side. I'm gonna get my um, let's see, bean sprouts, eggs, tofu. So in a in a pan, a saute pan or a wok, whatever you want to use, uh, you're gonna get a little bit of oil in there, uh, just a small amount of oil. Uh, you're gonna. Uh, I usually will uh, get my bean sprouts in there. I usually uh, kind of cook that, throw in my tofu, throw in my eggs, uh, like my, and kind of scramble my egg, kind of almost similar to like, uh, what, what was another thing we did with our egg? Oh, fried rice. I, this is going to be, we're going to be kind of doing this like fried rice or the, the lo mein noodle dish. Uh, this same situation, you're going to kind of cook it, and you're gonna, once everything's kind of cooked and put all in with the noodles, I usually will get, I have a uh, kind of, I'm gonna use this as a measuring uh, cup or here's my measuring cup of, uh, of, in this measuring cup, I have got the vinegar and sugar and I'm gonna just slowly pour in that and kind of toss it around. Uh, and what I usually do is I'll pour around the wok kind of around in the circle. So where I'm not pouring directly into one area, I kind of pour in a, in a circle. And then so where I'm kind of tossing in my noodles and tossing in everything. Uh, so where I'm not uh, just pouring that, that vinegar sugar mixture in one area. So where I'm kind of mixing it all around. Uh, and you can always add more, you can never take it away. Um, and a lot of times I will put in like a drop or two of the fish sauce in that sugar vinegar mixture. So where then it's all kind of all commingled. So where when it, because sometimes people will put in the fish sauce by itself and it will be in one area and they don't mix it up well enough and it'll just have a strong flavor in one area. So you just, uh, that, that's kind of my suggestion. Do it kind of like fried rice, do it like the lo mein, get everything in there, toss it around, toss, toss, toss. And then I get that sugar vinegar um, and, and a little bit of fish sauce uh, mixture in there, spread it around, toss it again, and then uh, maybe squeeze a little bit of lime juice or uh, lime juice on top and uh, maybe garnish it with a, uh, a fresh lime, a couple of fresh limes, and then uh, kind of garnish it also with uh, fresh peanuts or uh, toasted chopped peanuts on top. If you're allergic to peanuts, 
do not put it in there. Um, but that that's pretty much it. Uh, it it's a kind of a just a regular noodle dish, and I garnish it with some green onions on the on top of it. Um, let me show you. So the you know you can see a a little chunk of the egg right here in in this, but there. Excuse me. Um, you know, here's, you know, the bean sprouts right here. Uh, you, you know, that's, you got the tofu sitting right here. Um, you know, you want to cut the tofu into little small uh, squares. Uh, usually, uh, I usually cut them into little one inch squares, something like that, like medium dice, um, you know, because, you, you want that that's the only main kind of uh, thing that's going to be in there uh, protein or uh, wise so you just want to make sure that you you get that uh, you, you see that big uh, chunk of tofu in there not too big but uh, enough to you, you want because you still are going to probably use uh, chopsticks to, to eat this. So you wanna make sure that that it's pretty straightforward. Uh, any questions on the pad thai? Not at all, chef. No, chef. All right, um, all right let's take another uh, 15, uh, let's take a, I don't know, 10, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll come back and uh, do the next day. Thank cool. you, chef. Thank you. Yes, chef.
Yeah, 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 yeah. How about this? We'll uh, start class back at eight o'clock. That's in a few more minutes. We will uh, start restart class at eight o'clock.
All right, we are back. So, let's see what time it is. Ah, yes, it is straight up eight o'clock. Like I said, we will get started again. So, let's see here. We did uh, a tie. Now, let's talk about the final. Okay, so the final has uh, in this, you have a uh, spring roll with sweet and chili sauce, uh, red curry that uh, we're gonna be doing, what was that? Uh, on what, Tuesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, we'll be doing the red curry on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, so we have red curry and then we have fried rice. Um, so let's go to spring rolls or the egg rolls that we made. Let's see here, let me make this a little larger. You have the egg roll wrappers, you have garlic, you have ginger, you have uh, yellow onion, uh, carrots, celery, mushrooms, bell peppers, sprouts, uh, maybe this is a little bit more than what we had the last time we did it, correct? I think, uh, I don't know if we had uh, sprouts in our uh, recipe. Um, no, we didn't, we, Chef. We didn't, yeah, I didn't sorry. I, yeah. I, 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 I didn't think we did, but, um, and I don't know, I don't even know if we had mushrooms in there as well, um, but, um, you know, whatever, whatever vegetables, you know, I mean, it, it's, I, I really don't care what, what's in it, as long as it's an egg roll, a veg, a kind of a vegetable egg roll. Uh, you're going to have uh, um, just all, all of this, you need to cut it up into small, you know, julienne or batonne, you know, something kind of small um, in, and you're going to, we're going to cut up our celery, cut up our uh, onions. Now, I remember, uh, hold on a second, let me write down this time. Um, so, um, let's see, uh, no, no matter what, you, you need to make sure that your vegetables are cut, you know, uh, small enough because you're going to wrap it up into a, a egg roll, right? And you need to eat it. Uh, um, a, there was a picture, and I can't remember who it was, but one of y'all's uh, egg rolls, the, uh, the celery was cut more on a bias, kind of sliced at, at, and so it was more of like a, a horseshoe look to it. Uh, I would say don't cut it like that. Cut it more as a julienne, just so where it'll be easy to eat and to, to, uh, for your teeth to go through. Um, your bell peppers, all your vegetables, whatever it is, make it all about the same size, uh, same sizing, uh, because if not, it, it, one's going to be underdone, one's going to be done. Um, um, so ju just make sure that you, you cut them uh, all around the same size. Then um, I, you're going to saute it. You know, I, I basically saute your vegetables, cook your vegetables in a saute pan, toss, toss, toss. I add a little bit of, oops, I just lost the screen. Oh, there it is. Hold, hold on, I'm, my other screen is... Let me see if that works. My other screen was blacking, going black. And, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm gonna saute my vegetables, right? And then I'm gonna put a little bit of oyster sauce or hoisin. I think I, I told you last time uh, when we cooked this, either uh, hoisin or uh, oyster sauce, one of the two. Uh, just a little bit, a little bit of soy. 
the one thing you need to be very careful with is you don't want a lot of moisture. You, because moisture, if you have too much moisture or too much, uh, your vegetables too wet, then you, um, you know, then you put it in that egg roll wrapper. Uh, what's going to happen is that egg roll wrapper is going to get saturated with moisture and it's going to not seal properly or it's going to blow out where uh, it might be a little too wet. And when it's frying, it tends to blow out uh, and, and kind of burst uh, in, in some area. Uh, and that's sometimes you see that also if you cut your vegetables a little too thick and especially carrots, uh, what happens is, is there's a lot of moisture in the carrot and then uh, it'll kind of make it blow out. So you need to make sure you uh, cook your vegetables enough so where the moisture is out, but uh, you, you don't want a lot of uh, you know, moisture, just a little bit of moisture or hoisin, a little bit of soy, toss, 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 make sure it tastes good. And then I lay it out and uh, put it on a sheet pan or a pie tin or something and, and uh, let it either refrigerate it uh, or let it sit and cool somehow, some way before you put it in your uh, egg roll wrappers. Okay, and um, if you want to, I would suggest watching that video uh, going back to that day that we did uh, egg rolls and uh, watch the, the video of, of me making the egg roll. Um, you know, and, and that, that's a good way. Uh, you can get on YouTube, you know, get, do any sort of way you want to, to try to uh, get that in your long-term memory. But what I did was, is I put my egg roll wrapper kind of at a diamond shape on my cutting board. And I kind of remember changing my cutting board to a red cutting board so you could see it a little bit more whenever I was doing it in the video. Uh, so I have my egg roll wrapper in a diamond shape on my cutting board. I put my uh, vegetable mix in the kind of in the middle, rolled it once, folded the ends over. So my left end, my right end, and then rolled it up. Uh, but before I did that, I put egg wash kind of got, excuse me, I got the hiccup, but uh, put um, egg and water mixture and I put egg wash all around the edges of it to help create a good seal. Uh, and that egg will uh, kind of act as a glue and kind of seal it. Uh, so whenever I roll it up, I then I've got kind of the flap I'm gonna put a little bit of egg there and then flap it over so where I have a nice nice egg roll. And you wanna make sure that it's a roll, not flat on one end or flat on the bottom or whatever else. So make sure that that egg roll looks like an egg roll, not you know like a, a, flat, a, a flat cylinder or whatever else. You, know, you wanna make sure in what to ensure that it's kind of cooled down properly. You can make that. You can stick it in your freezer and just let it sit for maybe five, 10 minutes. And that really kind of sets everything and kind of makes it all, all kind of set up. And that kind of cools down the egg enough so where it, it'll kind of make the egg stick a little bit more. Uh, then you're going to fry it. Um, you want to fry it in a um, like a 350 degree of uh, grease, um, or um, I wouldn't go any more than 350 degrees um, on that because you, you don't want it, you want to make sure that it, it gets golden brown on the outside, but also hot on the inside. Uh, so you, you want to, you know, you don't want to brown it too fast. Uh, because then the inside will still be kind of cold and the outside will be, uh, you know, nice and golden brown. And that's kind of not what you want. You want nice and golden brown, but hot on the inside as well. So you need to manage that temperature. Um, and then uh, the sweet garlic sauce, 
I think it's going to come into a portion portion cup already. You don't need to make it. It's already portioned out. Uh, you'll just kind of put that in a little container and you'll have your fried, uh, your egg rolls uh, right there. Any, any questions about the egg rolls? Um, I will- No, Chef. Make, I might show you the video in a little bit on that, uh, just to uh, make sure everybody knows how to do that. Okay. Um, Hold on, I, I lost my All right, so that's the spring rolls or the egg rolls with the uh, uh, sweet chili sauce. You have the red curry. Now we haven't done the red curry, but uh, I talked about it already uh, and you'll see the video. So the red curry is done the day before your uh, cooking practical. So you're gonna, uh, so if you miss, what is that Wednesday, you won't know how to do uh, the red curry. Uh, but I will have a video on Wednesday. Um, I'll post that. So everybody will know how to do, you know, do the, do the red curry, but, uh, and then you've got your fried rice. Let's go with the fried rice. Let me pull that up. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. All right. Uh, shrimp, if you don't have shrimp, if you're allergic to shrimp, whatever else, you don't need it. Um, you know, if, if we don't have it, uh, that's totally fine. I really, it really doesn't matter to me uh, on, on the shrimp aspect of it. Um, fried rice is fried rice is fried rice. It doesn't really matter what, what you put in there, as long as it's fried rice, it could just be plain fried rice. And I'm, I'm happy with that. But um, you've got uh, Chinese sausage. Now, um, the one thing I don't know if I, if I said this or not, but the Chinese sausage has a kind of a, a um, uh, like an outside plastic or outside uh, kind of a um, membrane, if you will, you need to remove that membrane off. And I don't know if I uh, said that the first time or not. If I didn't, my apologies. But, um, you know, if you do not take that membrane off, it, it, it gets a little tough and chewy. Um, it's kind of like the, the hot dog, you know, or the outside of the sausage or whatever else, you just need to remove that membrane and it's easily removed. You, you just kind of uh, just pull it off um, because that, that um, casing, or I, I call it a membrane, but it's a casing, uh, but the casing is a little thicker and it tends to be a little chewier. So I usually remove that casing off. Um, and then I cut it in little uh, either rounds or half moons or, or what, whatever size, you know, that floats your boat. But the only thing I want you to make sure is everything should be about the size of the peas, the green peas and the rice, because this is fried rice. It's not, uh, you know, uh, onion and fried rice. If it was onion and fried rice, Maybe uh, the onion needs to be the main focal point, not uh, anything else. So every rice should be the main focal point, but the only problem is, is your rice is gonna be a little bit bigger than your green peas and, and all of that. So you want all your vegetables about the same size as your green peas, okay? Um, so I've got that, you need uh, your egg beaten up. Uh, your egg needs to be beaten up uh, or scrambled uh, and just kind of sitting there. You've got uh, your rice. That means we need to cook our rice ahead of time. So on, um, hold on a second, let me see. On Thursday, hold on, let me pull up. 
or I, I sorry, not Thursday, on Wednesday, when we are- On Wednesday, in, we make extra rice. You said it, Chef. Yes, yeah. yeah. We need to make sure we make extra rice on Wednesday just because of, uh, uh, we need that rice, a day old rice for the fried rice. So uh, the day that uh, day we do Thailand, uh, day 28, uh, we need to we need to steam extra rice. So uh, whatever this jasmine rice you're making, uh, times it by two. Um, you know, like just make a little bit extra for your fried rice. And if you if you make it the day ahead of time or the day before, the day of, it's not going to uh, fry up as nice. And I would suggest when you when you make your rice the day ahead of time, um, I would uncover your rice. I would not have it covered in the fridge. I would have it uncovered so where it 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 tends to dry out a little bit more. And my 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 personal suggestion would be put it on a cookie sheet, put it on a pie tin, put it something where you can kind of lay out really uh, thin and then don't cover it up, let it uh, just sit in the fridge uncovered so where it'll dry out a little bit more. And if you wanna make extra rice tomorrow, that's fine. A, a few day old rice is better than, um, you know, a, day old, a few day old rice is, is really good for fried rice because it tends to dry it out even more and then you can get a, a better crisp and a better color to it. And the, the starches are gonna be a little dry, drier so where it doesn't stick to your pan and kind of fall apart and turn into kind of mushiness. Uh, so th that, that's kind of a, a, good, a good thing for, you know, two day old rice is really good for uh, fried rice. Um, so, um, Let's see, let me go back to the recipe, sorry. Um, so you've got, uh, in the pork, you don't worry about, that's not, uh, that's not a big deal. We've got uh, egg already beaten up, uh, rice already pre-cooked, your peas, uh, just kind of have them sitting there. Uh, your carrots, I would uh, small to medium dice, somewhere in that area, um, you know, make them all consistent. Uh, onions also small to medium dice. Garlic, I would have pasted or finely, finely, finely chopped or uh, very nicely pasted. Uh, soy sauce, uh, salt and uh, pepper. Um, you know, if, if you, and I think I used a little bit of that, um, what was that Szechuan pepper uh, in mine? But uh, if you don't have Szechuan peppercorns uh, left or any of that sort of stuff, black pepper is totally fine. All right. So what I would do in a saut or in a wok or a saute pan, I would probably in in like I told y'all uh, when I did my fried rice. Um, you know, you can do it in a walk. The only problem with doing it in a walk is that it tends to, um, you know, you have a deeper amount of rice, uh, you know, in a walk. And, and if you have a saute pan, the, the rice is more spread out a little bit, not as, as deep. So where you can get more frying, you can brown that rice a little bit more and fry that rice a little bit more if unless it's if it's all like a, a large amount kind of piled up uh, it's going to get hot at the bottom but it's going to stay cold and then when I move the rice around it tends to uh, not not evenly cook so a saute pan a large saute pan would work uh, uh, you know even a griddle like a flat griddle, like a pancake griddle, like, uh, uh, you know, how you do pancakes or whatever else, that kind of griddle works really well. If you've ever gone out to like the mall and watched uh, like the Asian uh, restaurant, you know, in the mall, um, you know, they have a flat griddle and they just throw out the rice on there and they kind of cook it. 
and the reason why it's all crispy and really nice <coughs> because the rice is all spread out real thin and you can get a good amount of heat to everything instead of it just kind of staying kind of warm you can get a good crisp to it um so you you any pan whatever pan that floats your boat or excites you uh you're going to get some fat in there not too much fat um i i would say um you, you just need a little bit of fat now the one thing i if you watch the video and i think i remember saying this I, at the end of the whole thing, after I finished cooking it, I think I said I had a little bit of uh, regret in putting in my sausage a little early because my sausage got a little too dark and got a little bit of bitterness to it. So um, what I would suggest is, you know, you, you, you know, if you've got shrimp, you can uh, throw in your shrimp or throw in your sausage uh, at first, I'm cool with that, but I would take out the shrimp or take out the sausage, take it out, not leave it in at first. I would kind of cook my sausage, take out the sausage, then I can put in my carrots, my, you know, my vegetables, then I can put in my uh, rice, start cooking my rice, getting my rice, uh, and, and usually the rice will kind of, kind of pop a little bit and you'll hear some popping going on with the rice because the, the outside is cooking and the inside is, is heating up and there's usually moisture in the inside of the rice. And that's kind of why the rice kind of pops like that. Uh, so you kind of cook all of that. Then, uh, then I, when I pour in my soy sauce, I kind of pour around the edges of my pan or uh, very lightly and kind of work my work it into the rice. Uh, you don't want it too soy saucy, but you want a little bit of, you know, you want some soy sauce in there. And you're going to finish it with some green, uh, finely cut green onions or the green part of the green onion. Um, also here, um, you know, instead of yellow onion. If you don't want to use yellow onion, you could use the white part of the green onion. Uh, instead of using a yellow onion, you can use the white part of the green onion. That's totally fine. Um, any questions on the fried rice? No? No, chef. No. All right. So, um, so that is, so you got spring roll. Um, with the chili sauce, you have the uh, red curry chicken, and then you have the fried rice. Now, um, what I want to see is uh, you're going to need to make two egg rolls. Okay, so you're going to have to have two egg rolls made. Um, I, and I'm going to need to see the red curry and uh, the red curry chicken and the fried rice. Uh, now, you can have them made all at the same time. You can make them individually. Um, it doesn't really matter to me, um, you know, but I, I need uh, individual pictures of everything. Um, the better I can see, uh, I want like a close up, like when you cut your egg roll, I would like a close up of the inside of your egg roll. Okay, so you're, you're gonna take a picture you, in your, you've got two egg rolls. You're gonna have one you're gonna leave whole and then one you're gonna cut in half so where I can see the inside of the egg roll. So I can see, and also I can see if those egg rolls are kind of the same size. And I'm looking for consistency on the, the, the thickness, the length, you name it. I'm looking for consistency for the egg roll. Um, I'm looking for you to, uh, nail these cooking methods, guys. I, you know, the, the one thing that, you know, learn from all your mistakes, learn from your mistakes when, when it comes to this, uh, if you, you know, if your egg roll, uh, blew up, let's make sure that it, it, you try to prevent it from blowing up. Or if your egg roll was, uh, you know, apart, 
let's try to learn, try to learn from your mistakes and, and try not to let that happen. But I want good pictures, close up pictures of the inside. I want, uh, I, I need to be able to see all of this uh, really well. Um, you know, very, very important. Uh, and then you've got the red curry. Um, when, when you take a picture of the red curry, I want to make sure I see, I, I want to get a close up of the rice as well, because uh, I, I want to, uh, and uh, you know what, and I forgot to tell you, because I think the red curry, we need, you need to cook some rice. So you're going to need some regular rice, steamed rice for your red curry um, mix. Uh, so for your red curry, because you're gonna have the, in a bowl, you're gonna have the rice and then you're gonna have the red curry around the rice, right? So I wanna make sure you show me a picture of that rice as well, because if, if I wanna look to make sure that the rice is not underdone, the rice is not mushy or whatever else, are too wet or too dry. I want to make sure you get a good close-up picture of that rice, also with the red curry. Um, and you'll you'll see me uh, see what the what it should look like uh, in a couple of days. Um, and then you've got your fried rice for your fried rice. I want to make sure that you take a picture of uh, make sure all your vegetables are in the picture, uh, like your carrots. I want to make sure that uh, I want to see your knife skills. That's what I'm looking for is knife skills. Uh, making sure your, your, knife, your, your carrots are nicely diced properly. Um, all your vegetables are cut properly. Uh, I, I am looking for knife skills in all of this. Uh, so make, make sure you have good uh, a good view of all the knife skills, all the knife cuts that you're doing. Um, that is something I'm going to be looking at. Um, you know, but other than that, I think that is that that's it when it comes to the final practical. Um, any questions on the final practical portion? No, Chef. Sure. No. Okay. All right, um, now, let's see. Okay, so we've got next, or this week, let me go back to, so for the, for Japan, we're doing the tempura vegetables and uh, soy dipping sauce. You're going to need, uh, you're going to deep fry this. So you're going to need grease uh, or uh, frying grease uh, or some sort of canola oil, frying grease, whatever else to fry the tempura um, vegetables with. Um, please make sure your fryer is our, or whatever, whatever you're frying it in, if it's a pot or whatever else, um, you know, manage that temperature. Um, this one, I, I have had uh, people uh, get that grease too hot and it just burns your, um, your vegetables, burns the, uh, um, burns it all. So make sure you, you, watch that temperature and never ever throw in all the vegetables at once. Always test one, make sure that the fryer is at the right temperature, your grease is at the right temperature before you actually, um, you know, fry it all up, okay? That's very important. The kasudan, the, excuse me, the pork kasudan, you just gotta make sure that the pork is well, very well pounded out, thin, in even, even thickness, um, because we're gonna do a quick fry on this, right? So, or a quick saute uh, on, on this. So uh, you're gonna 
rebreading, uh, three stage breading procedure, flour, egg, and then uh, whatever you're breading it, and that's going to be the panko breadcrumbs. And then um, your, uh, and, and that is, that is it. Um, and it is served with the steamed rice. Um, so uh, you'll have the steam rice, you'll have the kasudan or the pork sitting right there, and, and then that, that is it. Uh, you're going to have to, uh, you've got your dipping sauce, um, and I, for the dashi to make, for making dashi, also, and, and is the bimito flakes and kombu. Kombu is a um, a seaweed. Let me go get the seaweed real quick because I forgot to show you the seaweed. Hold on a second. Let me go grab that. Okay, kombu is this kind of seaweed right here. You can see it looks like uh, it's basically a dried piece of seaweed. I'll, I'll pull up a picture of what it looks like as well. And here's kind of what kombu looks like uh, in a package. Uh, but this is the kombu right here. Um, so you're going to just take a small amount of kombu with the dashi flakes, uh, or I'm sorry, with the bomito flakes. Let me get back to that recipe. Sorry. Uh, so you've got the kombu that is this right here. It's dried. You would need to hydrate it. Okay. Uh, and that's and that is what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of, it's basically a seaweed. Um, so you got kombu, uh, bomito flakes, that's that uh, flaked, uh, flaky fish that real uh, looks like uh, wood shavings and water. Uh, so you're gonna, uh, you're gonna combine the kombu, uh, and the bimito flakes and the water, you're going to heat that up and you're going to, then you will strain it. And that's the liquid, that's what you call dashi. Um, the, uh, so you have all of this kind of combined. You need to let that uh, seaweed kind of hydrate and you kind of heat it up to kind of get some of that flavor of that seaweed out. And then also that helps dissolve the bimito flakes, the uh, dried fish fish flakes, and then um, and then you are going to just kind of uh, strain that out, and that's what you're going to use uh, for the dipping sauce. And so here comes the dipping sauce right here. That's the soy, the mirin, the rice vinegar the dashi, and that's what you created. You created the dashi and the dashi. And, but see, look, you only need, what, one tablespoon? Do you see that? One tablespoon of dashi. Okay, so that means um, the, the amount that you're making is a very small amount. You just need like a, I mean, granted, you, you, it's gonna be hard to make a very small amount. So that's why <coughs> I would say like a half a cup of water, some the bimito flakes and your uh, kombu, and then just kind of heat that up, uh, strain that. And then uh, when you're making your soy uh, dipping sauce, you're just going to just get a tablespoon and mix it in there. Um, questions about that? So that is tomorrow. We're going to be doing the uh, tempura with the kombu and uh, this, our tempura with the dipping sauce. 
and you got the kasudan, uh, pork kasudan uh, with the steamed rice, and then you've got to make the dashi. Um, if you want to make the dashi today, um, the dashi will be so much better tomorrow if you make it today, just because of the, the seaweed, you know, sits, the bamito flakes sit, and uh, all, all the flavors kind of marry into one instead of being individual flavors. Uh, so that, that's always a good thing, but that is tomorrow what we're going to be doing. The next day uh, will be in, oops, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Tomorrow is, yeah, tomorrow's that. And then the next day, uh, Wednesday will be the red curry, the steamed rice in the pad thai. Also during that day, I would make sure you make extra, make an extra cup of, of rice on this day. Um, and uh, that that's pretty much it that you would need uh, extra of because then the next day you're going to do your final exam so that uh, that rice is going for here. Uh, I know that this the the final practical does not say to make more rice, but you are going to need to make a little uh, maybe half a cup of rice, steamed rice for your red curry. So you will need to make uh, rice for your red curry. You're going to make two egg rolls and you're going to make your fried rice uh, for, uh, for the fried rice. But that is it. Any questions, problems, or concerns? No, Chef. No? All right. Um, I am finishing up. Uh, putting grades in. I will have them all done by today. Uh, this morning I was working on some. Uh, I sent a few of you emails. If you got an email from me, that means that, uh, you know, A, you need to read it. Uh, B, you need to uh, either give me those pictures that I'm missing um, or, or whatever else. So if you, uh, if you still have uh, blank spots, uh, other than for last week, um, if there's any blank spots all throughout the rest of the six weeks, uh, that means that I did not have your picture. And that means I need to have your picture uh, so where I can grade you. Um, if, if there are any, if you don't, if you have any blank spots, uh, you know, I, I will have the rest of the grades put in by this afternoon for last week. Um, but if you have any blank spots prior to uh, before last week, that means that uh, you, I need pictures for you. Um, so, and I, and I emailed some of you, I have not finished emailing. I got, I got busy and uh, doing something else as well. And um, I didn't get all the emails sent, but I will make sure that that gets done today. Um, also, um, your check your knowledges. Um, there's a few people that haven't even done it. Um, let me, I just stopped sharing so I can pull this up. Hold on a second. Let me look. Um, Hold on. Yeah, I've got quite a few people on week four um, have not done it, done week four, uh, week five, uh, week six for sure. Not many people have done. Um, hold on, my earphone is dying. All right, so week four. Uh, so week four, week five, I would suggest all of y'all just going through and making sure you have done all your check your knowledges. 
Uh, it's an easy grade, guys. Very easy grade uh, to get. Uh, if if you uh, if you have not done it, I think I've got. I give you like five or six attempts. You get the best grade, the highest grade out of all of that. But I would suggest you doing that. It really helps out your grade because no matter what, uh, if I have to, because there is no zero right now in there, it's just a dash. So what's gonna happen is, is when I put zeros in, in the dash, where the dash is or where, the, where it should be a zero, it's going to change your grade. So uh, if you have not done any of your check your knowledges, your grade, your final grade is not going to be what it shows right now. Because once I put a zero in there, it's gonna drop your, your grade down quite a bit. So make sure you get those, uh, check your knowledges in, um, into there. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and if there is a day that you made up, let's say you made up a day, you cooked uh, the food and uh, from three weeks ago, you cooked some food and I, and, and you were absent or whatever else, and, and you need to let me know that A, you cooked that food so I can go back in that folder and look at it, look at the photos. And then B, I need to send an email to the registrar uh, to give you credit for that day. Because if you, if you go back and cook the food, I give you attendance for that day, even though you missed it. I, that's a makeup. So where I go back, change that absence to a present, even though that you were not there, you still watch the video, you cook the food, you still participated, you did it. So you get credit, uh, you get credit for cooking it and B, you get credit for attending that day. So you will, uh, you know, you could, you know, get a, not be absent any uh, throughout the class. If you go and make up those days, I can change that absence into a present. But I don't know it until you let me know uh, because I'm not gonna go back into the folders and look and all of that sort of stuff. You need to let me know that, hey, chef, I did day five and uh, could you uh, make sure you grade that? and. I will grade it. I will uh, send an email to the registrar to make sure that that absence turns into a present. And that helps you out in, uh, when it comes to being on probation, attendance probation, or whatever else. That will help you out to prevent that. Um, but is there any other questions, problems, concerns that I can help you out with right now? No? I'm fine, Chef. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y'all out. You're going to work on your uh, check your knowledges. Uh, make sure that um, and I have to have grades done. The grades have to be posted and put into the computer by Friday, by uh, Friday, I think at midnight. So that means that any work, any stuff that needs to get done has to be done before Friday at midnight. Is that, is that understood? Because at Friday at midnight, and, and, and honestly, I, I actually, let's do Friday at 10 o'clock at night. Let's say no later than 10 o'clock Friday night, because I've got to post all the grades. I've got to send all the grades in by Friday by midnight. So that'll give me a little bit, a couple hours just to make sure that uh, all everything is squared up and everything is good. Um, we will be on spring break, okay? Uh, after this class ends. On that Thursday, your spring break starts. I have to be here and I've got to, I'm gonna be at the school uh, on Friday kind of getting my, you know, getting everything together, plus getting my stuff together for my next class. Uh, so if you have any questions or problems, you can call me up or email me on 
uh, Friday. Uh, I have no problem. Um, and over the spring break, if you have any questions, you know, feel free. I'm not doing a thing. I'm sitting at home or I'm going to be doing, I'm doing stuff. I'm going to be painting my back deck and doing a lot of just kind of work around the house. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions or problems, you can always uh, call or text me uh, or email me. Um, with that, I have really nothing else to say. Uh, I will see the rest of uh, most of y'all uh, in a little while when you come pick up your box, um, box of food. So uh, I'm going to start kind of, I don't think the, the, all the stuff is ready just quite yet. So I'm going to, uh, once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and start building, uh, building some of that stuff because I don't think it's completely built. All, all the uh, food is ready yet. So I have a question, Chef. Yes, ma'am. So around what time would you like uh, for me to go by? To pick up? Um, I would say give, give me at least about an hour. Uh, so uh, maybe 940, you, you know, starting at 940. About 1130. Uh, Would it be okay? If I go yeah, totally. 30? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to try to knock it all out within an hour. Uh, try to get all of it uh, prepped up and ready to go for y'all. Uh, but um, again, thank if, you so much. Sir. Uh, yeah, please call or text me uh, when you when you get here if because there's not many people here this morning. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in the back room. So uh, I can't hear someone knocking uh, and come to the back of the school, not the front of the school. Uh, and, uh, you know, same, same, same thing. And we'll knock it out. Y'all. Oh, Thank you, Chef. I Thank you so much. Y'all uh, have a great day and I will see y'all uh, tomorrow and I'll see y'all this afternoon. You too. Have a good Peace. one, Chef. See you later. Bye, -bye. Bye guys.